guys, I know it's been a little while. A few things have happened over the last couple weeks. I started a new job with the company that I've been working for, but a new job, so my schedule's been kind of weird, so I've been trying to get used to that. Trying to set up a schedule that works for making some videos, as well as, you know, doing the podcast. Podcast always comes first, because I want that to happen weekly, no matter what. I'm gonna try to get videos out there. Sorry, it's been about a week and a half, probably, since I had a video out. I wanna get at least one a week. But today I'd like to bring you guys through a little bit of how I take pictures of my snakes. So I just kind of started a new way of taking pictures of them and I wanted to show you how I do it. So a goal of mine with this video is not to be like, oh, you have to go out and buy a light tent in order to take pictures of your animals. I want to show the fact that, you know, you can do it anywhere and you don't have to pay any money and go the extra mile to get anything extra. It's all about just being resourceful with what you have, so I want to show you a way to use, you know, your cell phone as well as just one light, and what I'm going to use now is a bathtub. I do have a light box, but honestly, the bathtub works better for me. The light box is very small. The snakes, for some reason, always want to go to the corner of it and try to escape it, and it just looks terrible. So with the bathtub, there's enough surface area to where they may be slithering around and stuff like that but I can get enough pictures from a bunch of different angles and it's kind of hard to explain, but I'll show you. So obviously I do have a camera which I'm shooting this video on. It's gonna be a Canon G7X, but I do not use this camera for my pictures on Instagram. What I do use is my phone, which is gonna be a Samsung, I believe it's S7. And uh, what I do is I just put it on pro mode. And then that is, that's really it. I wanna show you that you can get good quality pictures just with the cell phone. Um, honestly, this cell phone takes better pictures than my Canon G7X, especially in uh, low light situations and stuff like that. I mean, this is a really great camera. Um, I don't think you have to go out and spend a lot of money on a camera. I think it's a lot about the skills that you develop and ways to work with what you have, which, you know, hopefully I'm gonna show you here. So what I'm going to do is I just want to make sure that the tub is dry and good to go. Um, before I did, a couple days ago, I washed it down with some bleach. Um, what I did was just bleach and water solution and then wash it out quite a few times with water just to make sure that there's no residue left from the bleach. So an important thing to do is to make sure that your room is completely dark. So what I'm going to do is close my door and then uh, we're going to turn out the lights and then our one single source of light. I mean, it's definitely better, I mean, to have a light tent, have light coming from all angles and have good even light, but this will work pretty good. This is a, I believe it's 18 watt uh, LED floodlight from Ecotech uh, Daylight. So the daylight color is gonna put off a more of a blue color. And, uh, just like the ones in your house may be more of a yellow color and we want that good daylight color to bring out the good colors in our snakes. So, so today I'm gonna be using my female hognose. Um, hognose are pretty easy to photograph because they're gonna be in defense posture a lot of the time. They're gonna be paying attention to you. They're not just going to be moving around. Like corn snakes are gonna be much harder because for whatever reason, they just always wanna square them away. So hognose is definitely gonna be a little bit easier. Obviously, I gotta film and take an actual picture, so I wanna make sure it's something on the easier end. So obviously, I do have a camera which I'm shooting this video on. It's gonna be a Canon G7X, but I do not use this camera for my pictures on Instagram. What I do use is my phone, which is gonna be a Samsung. I believe it's S7, and uh, what I do is I just put it on pro mode. And then that is, that's really it. I wanna show you that you can get good quality pictures just with the cell phone. Um, honestly, this cell phone takes better pictures than my Canon G7X, especially in uh, low light situations and stuff like that. I mean, this is a really great camera. Um, I don't think you have to go out and spend a lot of money on a camera. I think it's a lot about the skills that you develop and ways to work with what you have, which, you know, hopefully I'm going to show you here. 
So here's my light source. What I definitely want to do is always have the light, you know, behind the camera. So obviously never be pointing the light directly into the camera. That's going to get you a bad, a bad picture. So what I want to do here is get the attention of the snake so that I can get her a bunch of pictures of her looking at me. Um, I find that my pictures do a lot better when they feel much more personal. They're, you know, the snake's looking towards the camera. The eyes are the primary focus. I want to make sure that my camera's focused and then on the eyes of the animal. So right now she's posing perfectly for me. Um, so sometimes I'll move around a little bit and that will get her to get her tongue out because quite frankly, I want pictures to where her tongue's out. But this is perfect. So oftentimes you will see pictures, especially for sale pictures, stuff like that. Um, when you're going to have these overarching shots, which are going to show off, you know, the colors and the pattern of the animal. Honestly, when I'm taking Instagram pictures, I want more of the, I want more of the low shot because I just feel like it's a lot more personable. Ooh. I think it's a lot more personable of a look, you know, somewhat down here and you get good tongue flicks, and now here's the lighting right here that I would have. But, you know, you really get the animal's face and it's looking towards you, and then you can also get a full body of it looking towards you like this. But I'll show you, kind of got a perfect picture of exactly what I wanted uh, just now on the, on the camera phone. But yeah, she definitely behaves well under this. I mean, I'm just holding the light with my own hands and then just letting her do her thing. And then adjusting the light and the camera, you know, as she moves or, and then, you know, playing around with the light saying, that's way too harsh on that one side. It looks like there's some big shadows on her. So I definitely want to be over here. So it's just playing around with the light and then playing around with uh, angles and stuff like that. So now I'm at the point where I'm gonna review my pictures. I think it's important to note that you wanna take as many pictures as possible. So you may have taken a picture and say, oh, I think that was really good, and then you go in and review it, and you notice you know, the eyes aren't in focus, or certain part of the animal isn't in focus like you wanted to, or the lighting was a little bit off, or the tongue flick, or, you know, so you want to take as many pictures as possible. It's going to give you the best opportunity to get a perfect photo. I mean, there is no perfect photo, but I just want to show you guys, you know, how many pictures I took. So... So in that short amount of time, I took this many pictures because I just want to make sure whether the, the lighting's off or something's a little bit off. Then you can see the picture from yesterday. So what I'm doing is taking, you know, maybe even a hundred pictures or so just for one animal just to make sure I get a perfect shot so I have more opportunities to pick. The more pictures you have to pick from, the more chances you're going to get that shot that you were looking for. So I've gone through all my pictures. And it seems like this one is going to be the one I'm going to be going with. Notice I have a bunch of cracks on my screen, so you may not get the best uh, picture of it. But, um, yep, so this is the one I'm going to go with. Um, what I did, why I did choose this one. The lighting's pretty good and even and casting shadows right where I want it to. Um, the tongue flick is right at the bottom to where the tongue goes out and then down and up to pick up all the scent. And it's at that down position, you know, fully extended out there as well as pretty good capture as far as shutter speed and getting that tongue, not just a giant blur. Also, you can see the, the eyes are in good focus, which is going to be an indicator for me of if I have an animal, I took a picture of them and uh, they're in focus, but their eyes are out of focus or their head's a little bit out of focus, then I'm going to retake that picture because that's the connector between us and the picture 
at least in my mind, you know, you need to see the face of that animal. Also, it has the full body in there. I want a picture that's going to have the full body of the snake, especially from that angle. Um, I'd rather have a headshot with full body intact rather than, you know, just their head on a white background or something like that. Um, I think that's a pretty cool angle to get that. You can get the full body in there as well as a pretty close-up headshot. So I'm about to upload this to Instagram, but I don't want to edit too much in order to change the color of the animal, but I want to crop it a little bit as close as I can getting that full body in there trying to get this head kind of in the bottom corner of that middle square which is what in photography they'd call the rule of thirds so if something's perfectly centered it gives kind of an off-putting feeling to the the photograph alright so this um, obviously you can move the brightness back and forth um, I'm not gonna mess with that too much but what I am going to do is Brighten it up a little bit just to really make the, the background consistent. So the background may be coming out a little bit gray. So I want to get the whites to kind of pop much more white than they were before. And then a little bit of contrast. So I'm not changing the color of the animal, but just making it pop a little bit more. So you can see it's a little bland uh, tan and brown and then go like that. And then you definitely have that brown pop out a little bit more on that white background there. Structure can definitely give it more more of a textured feel as far as you're gonna see the scales more. Sometimes it pops a little bit more, but I'm gonna keep that pretty minimum. Warmth um, with this animal, probably not gonna be a big deal. Um, we're gonna stay pretty neutral. So nothing on the warmth. Saturation, I mean, I can make him look like that, but that's not really what the animal looks like in real life, so. We're going to be about right there. And then highlights, we can definitely get some of these whites whiter from our background. So we want to get the whites whiter on the background, but not wash out the animal. Shadows. None of those are really advantageous to the picture. And then sharpens just also going to give it some texture on the scales. But I mean, that's pretty much it. That's going to be our finished photo. And now I'm gonna post it up on Instagram. And there you go. So Instagram's a definitely a medium that I focus on because A, I like to take the pictures of the animals. It's good to show off the animals that I do have. Um, it's one of the best ways, you know, to get people into your collection and show off your animals. And it's important to, you know, use the right hashtags, get involved on Instagram. So like other people's pictures and comment on other people's pictures and do live videos. So what we do is do the podcast live on YouTube as well as Instagram. So that gets engagement with the Instagram audience. So I've been able to build my Instagram up to like 2,000 followers. And that's just, you know, posting every day. I do do it religiously every single day, which I think is super important. And um, so consistency as well as, you know, across all social media is totally important. So yeah, I just have fun with it and I really enjoy it. So I hope that helps you out and uh, get your Instagram game up a little bit. All you need is a cell phone, a daylight bulb, and a bathtub. All right, thank you guys. Please like, comment, subscribe if you like this video, and if you made it this far, you're on the team.